And once you get used to boating, there's more to be done as well. A new boater can get even more out of the waterways. If you look at some of the various waterways organisations and see what you get in return for your money and your time and your loyalty, I suppose, when you finally become the proud owner of a vessel, you're already part of something and it's not exactly voluntary. If your boat is on the Canal and River Trust waterways, you're contributing several hundred pounds a year to its coffers. On the Environment Agency's waters, the same sort of figure goes to them. Now, the fee in question is the license which allows you to use the waterways, but in the case of the Trust, it's something more than a simple fee. As a boat owner, you get to, you get to vote for a handful of members on the Trust's council. Uh, four out of more than 30 who advise the government-appointed trustees. But unlike the National Trust, where all members can vote to elect the board and change policy, the Trust is not really a membership organisation and will still be run by appointees, whatever you think. Uh, and that bring, brings us to another form of membership you can opt into, in addition to the one you pay for with your licence, Becoming a friend of the Trust is a matter of committing to regular donations, uh, suggested at between 36 and £120 a year for individuals, 60 to 180 for families. And current estimates suggest that around 30,000 have signed up, although the target was 100,000. In addition to your membership card and badge, you currently get a free book of canal walks, a sticker, a booklet, and copies of a magazine. Uh, family members get an activity book for children and a water safety guide. The Trust also runs ever -growing, uh, an ever-growing volunteer programme which offers a wide range of opportunities to do something for the system from litter picking and lock painting to office-based roles. So yeah, worth thinking about. The original waterways protesters, the people who opened up the waterways, were the Inland Waterways Association. And it, it has a, a glorious history of defending the canals, fighting against closures, with dramatic rallies in threatened spots, and vociferous and effective lobbying. The charity, founded in 1946, claimed to be key in saving the waterways and it advocates conservation, maintenance, restoration and development of the inland waterways for public benefit. With over 17,000 members, it's by far the biggest waterways charity, even though total membership is only around half the number of boats registered by CRT. Yet the creation of the Canal and River Trust, something the IWA has fought for over the decades, has left it looking for a new role in the future. Its days of Public protests are long gone and it has just discontinued its national rallies. The last vestiges of those campaigning rallies of the past. It's well funded and professionally staffed, but these days the Trust has similar aims and an even bigger staff and budget. The IWA also has an ageing membership and is seen by some boaters as the preserve of the better off leisure boater as well as having many non-boating members. There are 33 local IWA branches around the country, some are more active than others. So far, the IWA's response to the um, CRT has been to align itself firmly with the Trust, and that may, may be where it has a key role to play, at least in the realm of volunteers. Uh, the Trust, of course, is enthusiastically recruiting volunteers and the IWA has a, a group of people who actually have on-the-ground digging experience restoring lost canals for the past 50 years. That's the Waterways Recovery Group, part of the IWA, uh, and they're certainly um, fitter and probably younger than the average IWA member. The group has a real wealth of expertise and enthusiasm organising over 20 week-long waterway restoration working holiday schemes for volunteers of all ages throughout the UK every year. You pay about 50, 60 quid for food and accommodation. And there's many work parties around the country most weekends. And thanks to the hard work of 
the volunteers, many canals have been reopened, and the trust now insists it wants to see wants to see more reopening. So there's clearly a role for Wergy WRG volunteers and CR, CRT volunteers. Uh, there are more militant boat owners. The National Association of Boat Owners, or NABO, was formed about 20, 25 years ago by a group of boaters who felt boat owner, the boat owner's point of view was not getting heard at national level. Pay the £25 a year membership and you'll be part of an organisation that, in its own words, will always challenge injustice where necessary at the highest level. NABO is solely boater focused and says this enables it to take a strong stand on boating issues such as unnecessary boat safety requirements, excessive licensing and mooring fees, poor dredging and any loss of freedom to navigate or moor on the waterways. <coughs> as the website emphasises it's not a social club, a cruising club or a canal society and it's run by a council of elected members and which meets in Birmingham every six weeks. Its members are kept in touch through a newsletter and the website and it now has some 3,000 boater members and claims to be the largest organisation to represent solely boat owners on the inland waterways in the UK. It has uh, members from various boating sectors including share boating, continuous cruises, people living on board in marinas, right the way across the, uh, the spectrum, really. If you want to link in with the wider boating thing, the Boating Association is a slightly strange national organisation established about 60 years ago to promote cooperation and comradeship between all river users and all associated waterways to ensure the extension, development and improvement of those waterways and their facilities and amenities. Membership appears to be small and it has specialist interests in the northern and eastern waterways. It's now largely web-based and offering free membership. It has very similar objectives to NABO and is uh, recognised by the powers that be with representation on many national bodies if you're interested, just visit the website and send an email to the organisers. One for those living afloat is uh, aimed at those who plan to live on a boat. Um, you can buy membership of the Residential Boat Owners Association. It's just celebrated just over 50 years and claims to be the only national organisation which exclusively represents and promotes the interest of people living on boats in the British Isles. If your plan is that you will eventually live on your boat, the RBOA will welcome you as an associate member. It promotes the benefits of people living on boats to planners and navigation authorities and government and is represented on many national bodies. It also produces six magazines a year and gives legal and specialist advice. At £21 a year, it's pretty good value, but it's currently being challenged on the representation of continuous cruisers um, with a new organisation um, claiming to fill the vacuum. It's all about history of the canals, or is it? You will find there are all sorts of interests on the waterways, but the history of this unique national asset is something most boat owners care about, and None so much as members of the historic Narrowboat Club, formed back in the 60s, uh, is dedicated to preserving the working heritage of the UK canals, from the boats themselves to details of the waterways on which they travel. The club declares, we are passionate about working boats, traditional skills and the built heritage, as well as the practices and courtesies of the working boat people. At the same time, the group acts as a pressure group for navigational waterway heritage interests and welcomes all who supports those, uh, those aims. Central to the, uh, their efforts um, is the campaign to ensure that the waterways are navigable for full-length, deep-drafted narrowboats, because where they can go, anyone can go. So the HNBC then, it's a national boat club dedicated to preserving the working heritage of our canal system. 
It organises its own events and often holds its rallies in conjunction with other organisations and the presence of a substantial number of historic boats at venues like the National Waterways Museum at Ellesmere Port or the old boat docks at the Black Country Living Museum uh, create an understanding of canal history that's difficult to beat. Special interests thrive and sometimes people like to focus on a specific aspect of waterways tradition. So there's the Horse Boating Society which recalls the 200 years from around 1740 when horse-drawn boats were the, one of the main forms of transporting goods. It exists to promote horse boating and to preserve the heritage and skills of what was once a very common form of transport. Some of the members uh, carry passengers for pleasure. Um, others take part in projects making horse-drawn journeys often to rallies and festivals. Now, most of the earlier boats, of course, were wood and the Wooden Canal Boat Society, based at Portland Basin Museum in Tameside, has taken a unique approach to keeping that tradition alive. It helps people experiencing loneliness and social exclusion by providing volunteering and employment opportunities through the preservation of historic wooden canal boats, boat recycling trips and running a charity shop. The society offers its restored boats for respite holidays for disadvantaged people and those suffering from mental illness and has the second largest collection of former working wooden canal boats in the UK. There's even an electronic uh, boating society, and that may get a lot more interest of, in, in the future. Um, there's only one club that actually welcomes members from all over the country. It has no premises, um, and that's the Cutweb Internet Boating Club. Uh, it was born out of a discussion in uh, 1998 uh, where an, uh, an internet gathering uh, organised an actual boating gathering. And uh, it offers a, members, a membership of the Association of Waterways Cruising Clubs, which entitles them to more at other clubs while travelling. Cutweb was set up after an agreement with the um, Association of Waterways Cruising Club that a virtual boating club with no moorings, clubhouse, etc. could still become affiliated. The only requirement for you to join is an internet account and a subscription to the Cutweb Internet Boating Club. First time membership costs a tenner and the club communicates by means of a closed mailing list to which you are automatically subscribed. And there it holds discussions and chats with other club members. Now, depending on the boat you bought, or the engine powering it, you may like to join one of the societies dedicated to a particular engine or boat builder. Gardener engine owners get together at an annual rally and Russell Newbury owners like to gather regularly for prolonged discussions of the virtues of their particular means of motive power. Some boat builders followed the example of car manufacturers and helped promote clubs dedicated to a particular brand, and some of those still exist. And then there's all the local organisations across the waterways. There are lots of local canal societies, some dedicated to keeping their local canal in tip-top condition, others to restoring a lost waterway. Join one and you may find yourself fundraising at special events as your society fights its way towards putting another mile or two of its canal in water, or you could be working with the Canal and River Trust volunteers, now increasing in number to keep your canal looking spick and span. Every canal, it seems, has a society, whether it's part of the system or unlikely to see a boat in the foreseeable future. I was gobsmacked a few years ago as a Suffolk boy who would have sworn the county was canal free to learn there was not only a canal from Ipswich to Stow Market, but a society to restore it. Who knew? Now, joining these groups will cost between 10 and 30 quid a year, and of course a chunk of your time if you're going to take it seriously. All of them help embed you in 
uh, to the canal world and uh, you can fit the societies you join to your particular interests.